Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. This, this one being made on the 29th of June, and that's a Friday uh, for release on Monday. And that would be, of course, the 2nd of July. The 4th of July, just a couple days away. We're going to be talking about Syria today because things are happening rapidly in Syria. But before that, here's a little note that I'm sure you didn't read in Western news outlets. This comes from Israel Today uh, magazine, and this note came out on the 27th of June. Last week, Russia reinserted itself into the Israeli-Palestinian peace process in a major way with a highly publicized visit by President Vladimir Putin while meeting with the Palestinian Authority, uh, and by the way, their leader is Mahmoud Abbas, uh, last Tuesday, Putin said that Russia had no problem recognizing an independent Palestinian state, noting that Moscow had already done so during the days of the Soviet Union. Quote, we recognized Palestine 25 years ago, and our position has not changed. So uh, Russia is in the mix and on record, and Vladimir Putin is basically flaunting his power throughout the Middle East right now. <clears throat> Here's a news release from uh, June 28th, last Thursday. Uh, there was this report. The Republican Guard Battalion commander uh, charged with Syrian President uh, Bashar Assad's security is keeping Assad shut away in what is called his Unity Palace. There's a compound uh, just outside of Damascus where the uh, Assad family is being basically kept under house arrest. Assad and his family may not leave the building without the uh, commander's position, or for permission, but rather, under an order current since uh, about a week and a half ago. It's not clear to whom the commander defers in this case and who, in fact, actually determines whether Assad can come or go. And this article raises the question about whether Assad is being kept under house arrest for his own protection or to keep him from fleeing to Europe which uh, the rumor mill says that he really wants to do. He, uh, basically doing like a lot of other Arab leaders have done in the past, taking the money and running off uh, to relative security in uh, friendly hands in Europe. Uh, asked by uh, this particular reporter if an element in the Republican Guard ordered the palace under siege to prevent the president of his, his family from fleeing, uh, Western sources replied that the situation could be described as a partial siege, which is continually uh, expanding. Because of the partial siege and these restrictions, Assad and his wife are both in very low spirits, and the atmosphere inside the palace is very bleak. Although they are showing propaganda films showing uh, uh, Assad and his wife and his kids playing badminton you know, on the palace grounds and so forth and so on, Essentially, it's house arrest. Much is going on in Syria right now. And in fact, here's a uh, rather current news report, <clears throat> Dateline Friday. Uh, the Syrian crisis is on a knife edge between a Western Arab Turkish military offensive in the next 48 hours and a big power accord that will ward it off. Uh, military sources report heavy Saudi troop movements toward the Jordanian and Iraqi borders. Get this, uh, the Saudi princes have now mounted armed forces that are heading northward toward Jordan and Syria, which I think is, is absolutely an amazing turn of events. The Saudi units are poised with tanks, missiles, and special forces, along with anti-aircraft uh, batteries to enter Jordan. Uh, in two different ways. Number one, to safeguard Jordan's king, <coughs> Abdullah, excuse me, against potential uh, Syrian or Iranian reprisals. But the second contingent of the Saudis are cutting north through Jordan to enter southeastern Syria itself, where a security zone will be established uh, around the cities of Dara'a, Deir al-Zur, and Abu Kamal. Check your map. Look at where that is, southeastern Syria. The Saudi Arabian armies are moving in there. So now we have the Russian army coming in from the north along with uh, uh, Tayyip Erdogan's Turkish army along the northern border 
along with Al-Qaeda coming up uh, with Hezbollah from the east, uh, or from the west, and basically what you've got is a massing, a huge amassing of forces in and around Syria. <clears throat> the Saudi units deployed on the Iraqi border are there to defend the kingdom against potential incursions by Iraqi Shiite militias crossing into the kingdom for reprisals. So now we have war along the Iraqi-Saudi Arabian border. We have the Saudis moving into Jordan. We have the Saudis moving into southeast Syria. It's just as I've said now for how many weeks or months has it been? Every day the news out of the Middle East brings another element of tension. And at, at certain point, logic tells us that the, the stretching action that's been taking place can go no further and something uh, will have to let go. Uh, Western sources have reported that uh, Jordan is also on a full war alert status. So to reiterate, we know that uh, we have Al-Qaeda in Egypt and Gaza around Al-Arish. Uh, we have Al-Qaeda along with Hezbollah in Syria. Uh, we have uh, Al-Qaeda forces uh, moving up into uh, western Syria. We have the Saudis moving their forces north through Jordan and southeast uh, Syria. And last but not least, we have the good Russians there to help out <laughs> should all else fail. Uh, this is so biblical, it, it just blows me away. <clears throat> you know, we read Ezekiel 38 about the great uh, battle that's going to be launched at a certain point into the mountains of Israel. But what comes just before Ezekiel 38, <clears throat> describing that great battle? Well, we have the regathering of Israel, starting in uh, 37, 19. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, the tribes of Israel with his fellows, and I will put with him even uh, the stick of Judah and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. And so the Lord describes putting together two sticks, one representing the northern tribes of Israel, one representing the southern tribes, uh, joining those two sticks together and holding them in his hand. And, and that's the way the Lord, through prophecy, chooses to elaborate upon the position of Israel in the latter days. And as I said, this prophecy takes place just before uh, Ezekiel uh, 38. Uh, moving down to 37.25 in Ezekiel, And they shall dwell <clears throat> in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. You know, we're talking about the ten northern tribes, the two southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin, being joined together, brought back into the land, held in the hand of God, and solidified just prior to the great battle of Ezekiel 38. Now, I think we are in the period of Ezekiel 37 right now. I believe the tribes are almost fully regathered. I believe that they have been put in place. They are prepared for action. Uh, they are on a war footing currently, as we've been describing over the past several days. And they are, as uh, the Bible says, two sticks, the stick of uh, Ephraim, the stick of Judah, and they are joined together in the hand of God. And the metaphor is unmistakable because God intends to use those sticks to beat down his enemy in a supernatural way. Well, we keep watching the news out of Israel. Have a great uh, week this week as we go into uh, the celebration of the Declaration of Independence, 1776, uh, this coming July 4th. And I uh, hope you have a great week in the Lord. And remember, keep watching. We're watching. Keep looking up.